Hello everyone, my name is Lex. Welcome to my poker vlog. Wait, that doesn't sound right. What is up guys, my name is Lex. Welcome back to the vlog. Today we're playing at Seminole Coconut Creek here in Florida, 2 5 5 10. Let's get down to the table, let's get to the action. Let's go. After about a 20 minute wait, we sit down with the 5-10 game here. It starts off a little bit nitty, a little slow. Nobody's really getting out of line too often, but after about an hour of chopping the blinds, we decide to add a $25 mandatory straddle and the game definitely starts picking up. When it folds to me in the big blind, I raise to $100 with king 10 of spades. Under the gun player makes a call. We're heads up to a flop of nine, five, eight, two spades. We flop a flush draw, pretty good board for me. I continue for $100 and he makes a call. Turn is a five, which definitely should be helping his calling hands more than my raising and betting hands on the flop. But given the fact that I have a flush draw, I want to continue to put on the pressure. So I bet $200 this time and it gets through. He makes the fold. I'm not sure why. I think it was a combination of the green felt and the lighting and my camera trying to adjust. But for some reason, it gets like green tint on the camera lens. As you can see right here, I have no idea why and I apologize for the poor quality. Still with the straddle on, I pick up a beautiful playable hand. Jack 10 of hearts, I raise to $75 and unfortunately everybody lets it go and we just take down the blinds. I'm in the hijack in this hand with king nine of diamonds. I make it $75. Small blind who is a short stack player makes the call. We completely miss on queen five, seven, two clubs. He checks, I check back. Turn king of spades, now giving us top pair. He checks again, I bet $110 and he makes the call. The dealer collects our bets and puts out the ace of hearts on the river. That's not big. How much should I bet? Uh, 25. <laughs> Do you 25 and I fold. Put me to the test. Put me to the test. Even better. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> he went with the complete opposite way. <laughs> when I first sat down at the table, it was playing extremely tight. No pots over $200. I actually thought about calling it a night early and just going home. And I'm sure glad I didn't because as the night grew on, the table got more and more crazy and wild. We end up playing some huge pots coming up. Moving on, it's my turn to be in the under the gun strata with queen 10 offsuit, small blind makes it $100. I make the call. We flop top pair on 10 three deuce rainbow and he checks over to me, which I found pretty odd. This player had been playing very aggressive the entire night, so I felt like he could be trapping here. So with top pair, I check back. Turn five of hearts, now bring in a gut shot straight draw if he has any ace high hand. He leads out for $125 and with top pair, I don't think a raise is necessary. Folding is just way too tight, so I match his bet. The river may be one of the worst cards in the deck. It's the four of hearts bringing in a backdoor flush and any six or ace makes a straight. I'm expecting him to bet here almost 100% of the time, but he checks, so interesting. I don't think I should turn my hand into a bluff. It's just too strong, so I check back, showing queen 10, and he shows king 10 for top pair with a slightly better kicker and he wins this pot. The next hand we play is actually up against the same exact player, and at the end, it gets pretty interesting. He raises here on the button to $75. I have pocket tens in the straddle. I three bet to 275. He makes the call. Flop is 883 rainbow. On this board, I bet $150, and he calls. Turn nine of clubs, now bringing in a flush draw. With this particular hand I have, I think it's close between continuing to bet here or check. And against this player type, I decided to check over to him. I think he's gonna be floating me a lot on the flop, looking to bluff on the turn. By checking pocket tens here, it may look like I have a hand like ace king or ace queen. So it may allow him to value bet a worse hand like sixes, sevens, or pocket fives. He does decide to bet $300. I look over at his stack and he only has $1,000 remaining. Given the pot size and this size of bet, I think I could just rip it all in here. I go back and forth between shoving and calling. Ultimately, I decide to call. We get a miracle river of the 10 of hearts. We make top full house. My plan on the turn was just check call the turn and check call the river, but now we make a full house, the essential nuts, and I don't want to check here and have him check back a nine or a smaller pocket pair that he may call with. So with a $1,400 pot and only about $1,000 remaining in a stack, I decide to just rip it all in here, hoping he either has an eight or a pocket pair he does not want to fold. He goes into the tank for a while and he lifts his arms and starts counting out his chips. And when he does this, 
I actually realized instead of having $1,000, he has $2,000 in a stack because he has one pumpkin chip that I just couldn't see. I do wanna make it clear that I'm not blaming the button for hiding his chips or using an Alec Torelli angle here. Obviously, this was just my fault for not asking how much he had. He had his chips clearly out in sight, but for some reason, I just didn't know or didn't see that he had a 1K chip as well. So I'm feeling pretty stupid. I rivered the nuts and I jammed all in for what I thought was $1,000, but it turned out he had over $2,000 in a stack, but he hasn't folded yet. He's in the tank thinking. He's obviously visibly frustrated. He has no idea what I have. The more he's thinking, I actually think it could be a good thing that I jam for so much money because my hand just doesn't make too much sense at all. And he might call down a little bit lighter here because he would expect me to never play aces, kings, or queens like this. It's basically me saying I have a full house or a bluff. So obviously we're praying for a call here. After over two minutes in the tank, he says he has an eight and he lets it go so pretty unfortunate there i think i played the hand terribly on the river i should have checked he would have bet i would have figured out that he did have over two thousand dollars in a stack and i would have made a better river raise but lesson to be learned always make sure you know how much your opponent is playing i will be on the road again a little bit of an announcement here on april 22nd i'll be playing at jacksonville best bet on their 510 live stream and then going to tampa hard rock to play the 23rd and the 24th making videos as well so if you guys are in that area make sure to come out maybe we can play some cards next i have ace jack of diamonds a beautiful hand under the gun raises to 75 i make the call and then the button short stack jams all in for 430 dollars with the straddle on it's only 17 big blinds so when under the gun makes a call for 430 dollars i feel like i can call here with ace jack suited and i should be able to see all five cards given the fact that i'm in position with $1,300 in the main pot, we're now going to be playing for a side pot depending on the run out, but I don't expect the pot to be too big. Usually people play pretty face up when it comes to dry side pots, but that changes when the flop is 10, 8, 5, 2 diamonds. We flop two over cards and the nut flush draw. He checks to me with about a pot size bet left in my opponent's stack. I decided to just rip it all in. I go all in for over $2,000. My reasoning behind going all in here is that I can get my opponent to fold hands that are beating me like ace king or ace queen. He also might have some smaller pocket pairs like sevens or sixes or pocket nines that really can't withstand such a big bet. I'm hoping he'll fold that hand and maybe I'm up against the buttons king high or queen high hands. Or if he does have a pair on the button, we will hopefully get there with one of our outs. Now under the gun goes into the tank for a while. Again, he's thinking, he's thinking, and eventually he decides to put in the call. So we're playing over a $3,000 pot. We decide to run out the board two times. I always table my hands. That's, that's probably good. He likes to play 6-8. He does like to play 6-8. Ace high and flush. We completely break out on the first run out and ace 10 on the button is going to hold. But the second run out, we hit the flush right on the turn and we're up against ace 8 from under the gun for the side pot. So we end up chopping the side pot up. And then for the main pot, ace 10 is going to win on the top and my flush is going to win on the bottom. So we end up chopping up the main pot with the button. I did have both of my opponents crushed pre-flop, so it's a little bit annoying that we're not really going to win a big pot here, but I guess I got lucky on the second run out with the flush. I will take it. We end up taking down a little over $200 profit in this hand. With the $25 straddle still on, I'm in the small blind with ace five of hearts with only the big blind and the under the gun player left to act. I raise it to $100. Under the gun makes the call. Heads up, out of position to seven, three, four, two spades. We flop a double gut shot here and he deuce or any six will give us a straight, but on this lower connecting board, I decide to check. Under the gun bets $150, and we do have some outs here, but I don't think a check raise is good. Ace high could be good here some of the time as well, so I wanna match his bet and see what he does on the turn, which is what I do. The fourth card, Jack of Hearts, I check over to him. I'm expecting him to slow down a little bit at the time once I call the flop bet. If he bets again, he's representing hands like two pairs, sets, and straights. So it doesn't make too much sense when he fires out $425. We can assume if he had a hand like pocket eights or maybe king seven or even a three or a four, he wouldn't be betting the sizing once I call it in the flop and the jack comes on the turn. I would expect him to check back or maybe bet smaller. 
So this bet is polarizing. He's saying he has a super strong hand or a really big draw. I do have a five in my hand, which blocks his straight possibilities. I think about getting super sticky and calling down here with ace high, but that seems like somewhat of a punt. What am I gonna do on a brick river if he fires again? So I let this one go and he shows king six of spades for a straight and flush draw and he bluffed us. The river would have been an ace, so it would have been interesting what he would have done there. I wish I would have just went with my read that he was bluffing and called down there, but we're still up about five or $600 on the session, running pretty good so far, but unfortunately, that is all about to change. It folds to me in the big blind. I finally look down at pocket aces. I make it $100, and the straddler makes the fold. The player sitting next to me who has been making jokes and making the table super fun all night decides to buy a full round of drinks for the entire table and things start to get pretty crazy. With lime margarita flowing through my veins, we're ready to play some big pots. Nice and loosened up now with pocket kings. That is what I'm talking about. I make it $75 from middle position. The button makes the call who is a player who had been playing very tight. I think he's played about two hands in the last two hours. Under the gun makes a call as well. Three ways to queen nine three rainbow. When it checks to me, I bet $125 and the button snap raises me here to 500. This may seem like a great spot to be in. Getting raised with pocket kings on a queen high board and against a lot of other players, I would be feeling very good about my hand. But against this guy, he hadn't got out of line the entire night, played basically two hands. So when he raises here, he's saying he's got two pair or a set or maybe even pocket aces. I really hate doubling up people who don't play many hands, but can I ever fold pocket kings here? I don't think so. He's representing such a strong range of basically queen nine, pocket nines, and pocket queens. I think he would re-raise pocket queens pre-flop. So I call and we see the deuce of hearts on the turn, a total brick, doesn't change anything at all. I check over to him and he jams all in for $1,100. The way my opponent is playing this hand, he's saying he has a super strong hand and pocket kings are probably never good, but his bet timing did not make too much sense to me. On the flop, he snap raised me to $500. If he would have flopped a set on the flop, wouldn't he think about his bet sizing for a little bit longer? Maybe contemplate calling and slow playing or making it $300 or $400? Given the fact that he just snap raised to $500 seemed a little bit suspicious to me. And now on the turn when he snap shoves all in, for 1100 it just seems a little bit fishy but would he ever do this with a straight draw i mean jack 10 is the only draw here maybe he's got king 10 but we block that he could possibly have ace queen and think it's good maybe he flatted with kings pre-flop he thinks those are good as well after thinking for over a minute i just think i cannot fold if he's got me he's got me so i make the call i can't fold i can't fold yeah. with kings right Twice? Whatever you want. Twice. All right, twice. Two times. Jack ten of hearts. Ace queen of hearts. Jack ten got there. Jack ten got there twice. Oh my! Oh my lord! God, what I say? Don't do Jack ten. And I had a zero. Oh my god! Oh, oh god! Sick. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. Oh, that was a nasty beat. I haven't taken one of those in a while. Oh, shit. 11 Almost two. Hit the eight both times. Ugh. Smashed that's it. Crazy. Nasty. Wow. Nice, Sam. Welp, not much to say there. We got it in very good. My opponent had six outs and he binked the eight on both rivers and we end up losing about $1,700 there. I reach into my bag, add on to my stack and move on to the next hand. Hey. Little, the old button raise hair? It was, it's a light raise. The old and button raise hair. Like a, a proposition raise. The drinks are flowing and the table has definitely loosened up a little bit. Another poker vlogger down here in Florida, Harry D, I mean Harry B, opens up on the button. I have King Jack of Diamonds. Doug Polk says you should mix a three bet and a call here. This time I decide to call. We flop a flush draw on a nine high board. I check and he checks back. Turn four of spades. When he checks back the flop, I think he's going to have a lot of ace high hands. And with a bet here, we should be able to take the pot down here a lot of the time. Two over cards and the flush draw seems pretty good to bet for me. So I make it $100. Harry doesn't think for too long and matches my bet. 
The dealer puts out a pretty interesting river. We miss our flush, but we end up making top pair. It's a king. The way this hand played out, I am certain that I have the best hand here, but if I bet, will he really call me with a worse hand? I don't think so. So I check over to him, trying to induce him to bluff with his missed straight draws or flush draws or ace high hands, just because this king is going to help him way more than it's going to help me. He bets $300 and I make the snap call. I show king jack of diamonds for top pair and he shows pocket fours for a set. So a little mini cooler there, set versus top pair. We end up losing another $400. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Yeah, I'm lucky, man. Wow. Yeah, everyone gets lucky, you know? Get my, hey, get my lanky over there. Like. Harry Poker. Harry Poker. <laughs> Yeah, you better make sure that goes in the you wanna... My new friend to my right now buys a full round of drinks again for the table, so we switch it up with a little bit of Bud Light. Hopefully that will ease the pain of running really bad this session. The good thing is that we are picking up some pretty playable hands. In the small blind this time, Harry opens up in the hijack to $75, cutoff makes to call for $75, button makes to call for $75, and with such a strong hand, I put in a squeeze play, I raise it up here to $400. Harry lets go of his cards, cutoff folds, button folds, and we take down over $200 uncontested. I'm stuck about $2,000 and I want to try to get it back, so I asked the table if they want to do one round of $50 blind raises under the gun, and they all agree. So the game is now 5, 10, 25, 50, a massive game, but unfortunately, I could not get anything going during this one round. I get myself my third beverage of the night, a chocolate milkshake, trying to sober up before my drive home. Now, next hand, 51025, Harry B opens up in early position. I get dealt in pocket kings in the cutoff. I three bet to $250, button makes to fold, small blind makes to fold, but the big blind puts in a cold four bet. He re-raises here to $900. Nine. <laughs> what did you bet? Point nine. Nine? Oh, there's a, oh, nine. Point nine. He did say nine, I heard oh, it. I heard five. No, I heard nine. nine. How much is it? 900. Nine. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The player in the big blind is a new player. He sat down with $1,000 worth of chips and then added on $1,500 before the hand was dealt. He then puts in a cold four bet to $900. Harry B folds. The action is back on me. $2,500 is really only 100 big blinds in this game. With pocket kings, I am happy to get this all in. I've been running bad all night, losing with big hands and then not really holding up with my big hands either. With all that said, with pocket kings facing a four bet with only 100 big blinds, it's all going in. All right, I'm all in. All in? Wow, oh my God. Uh -oh. Once or twice. Whatever you want. I don't care. I don't like to pay. We can go twice. Here we go, baby. No one's open. I pulled an ace jack. I'm down over $2,000, not running good the entire night, losing in all the big pots, but now we're playing a massive one over $5,000 in the middle with pocket kings. If we can win this pot, we can turn our whole night around. If anybody gives a shit. Oh, I don't like that I'm so one. good. I'm so good. I got the nuts on that one. Upset. You got a flush. You got a flush. Oh, you got ace king of hearts? Man, I run so bad. Chop it. Chop it. We get it all in as a huge favorite over a $5,000 pot. Kings versus Ace King suited. The big blind hits a flush on the first run out, and we hold on the second run out. Pretty tilting. I got it in good the entire night and just could not hold up, but that is how poker goes. After about six hours, I end up calling the session. It was super fun playing with these guys and meeting some new people. We end up racking up our chips, heading to the cage, and cashing out for the night. All right, guys, that is it for this one. Our second session here at Seminole Coconut Creek Casino. And honestly, the game was super fun. It started off a little bit slow. Um, not much going on for the first hour or so. Then we started straddling. I picked up pocket tents, riveter full house. I thought my opponent only had $1,000 in his stack. So I shoved all in and he had $2,000. So that was a big mistake by me, but sometimes it happens, obviously. It's all my fault, I, it's, I'm the one who should be looking at his chip stack. He wasn't hiding his chips or anything. It was in plain sight, I just, you know, I didn't see it. And then I was all in there with Ace Jack of Diamonds with a flush draw. I was all in with Pocket Kings versus Jack 10, and he hits an eight on both runouts. That was really nasty, honestly. That was, that was pretty gross. And then Pocket Kings all in versus Ace King suited, and we chop. So 
honestly, if I would have ran good tonight and held up with that pocket kings versus jack 10, and then held up kings versus ace king, I could have been up like $3,000, but ended up losing about $1,700. Game was really fun though. Had some drinks, uh, talked to some cool people out for sure. Be back, brand new poker room upstairs, no smoke. Uh, great service, um, great atmosphere. So I'll be coming back here probably once a week at least, making videos for you guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Coming off, this guy's got this dusty ass car behind me, look at that. Anyway, if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. A Little bit of tournament action the last week or so. This dusty ass car is coming around again, look at that. Sounds like a freaking washing machine back there. Jesus, rinse cycle, man. Anyway, tournament vlogs last week were back to cash game, and and I'm going to Jacksonville Best Bet on Friday, next Friday, um, for the live stream game, 510 live stream game. Then I'm going to Tampa Hard Rock after that. So I don't know the exact date. It's the 22nd, Friday the 22nd, Best Bet Jacksonville live stream. Tune into to that. And then April 23rd and possibly 24th, Tampa Hard Rock, going to be playing 2-5 and 510. All right. That is it for this one. Until next time, I'll see you.